Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. I'm Mark Rutten and we are working on the 2.4 meter project and I am just as anxious to see this thing get off the mold as you are but there's one last job we need to do before we can do that and that is mark out the shear line. Now the shear is going to be pretty easy to mark out throughout most of the boat but the tricky bit is back here at the transom. Okay now normally when we're planking a boat we plank up to a shear line. Sort of the, the final plank is our shear plank. That shape is predetermined. Uh, in this case, because we're cold molding, we need to bring all that planking up past the shear just to give us some place to fasten it. And we don't want all those little fasteners to show in the finished planking, so we go a little bit deeper. So when I built the mold, I made the mold about two or three inches deeper than the finished boat. So we need to find that line along here. And I took some steps in, when I was building the mold to help make that easier. And we'll get to that. Now the tricky bit is back here at the uh, transom. So we don't have a proper transom. We have what we might refer to as a reverse transom, sort of, but maybe a slipper stern is a better way to describe it. Now when we were planking this area, we needed to run that planking way past it. Because of the tight turn of the bilge here, we needed a lot of leverage on that planking just to be able to bend it around. So that planking runs quite a ways past this little, this little area. So our big job now is to try and figure out how to describe this gentle curve onto the hull so that we can trim it and get this thing off the mold. So that's what today's gonna be all about. Sit back and relax, let me do all the work. All right, I'm just prepping the uh, hull here to pull it off the mold. And what I wanna do is lay out what the shear line looks like here at the stern. It takes this little uh, curve, creates a, what we call a slipper stern or reverse transom. I don't have any good way of doing that once it's off the mold, but right now while it's all leveled up, I can work off the um, scale drawing that I have or the full size lofting and we can plot what this curve looks like on here. But to do that, I need some references. So I got my laser set up so that it's landing right on the station line here. And what I'm gonna do is just use some masking tape to lay off uh, a line that wraps around the center, I'm gonna do this in a few different spots. So I'm gonna, I am actually gonna slide the whole thing over. Right about there, it's three inches. So we'll do that. I'll just, just lay my rule right on the boat here. I'll just try and slide this over another three inches. There we go. Now I know as I'm coming up further aft, I need to um, consider the fact that my line is actually gonna be farther up here. because so I've got this line that's gonna be going whoop, like so. And there should be one more. So I'll slide this over again. And I've picked three inches just because on my, on my scale drawing, I've just ar arbitrarily divided up the last station into, into quarters for this very purpose. So there we go. It doesn't have to be super accurate because after all, in the end, we do it by eye. So let's flip the lights back on and figure out how we want to do the next bed. Right, so I've got my lofting over here and you're not going to be able to see this on camera. But I've got my reference line and a bunch of points that I can pull off of it. So that's basically what I'm doing. Just using my dividers. And now we're using the laser to represent one of the water lines that's on our lofting. So we can just dial it into the right location and then start picking points off of it. And then my last, I don't have a spacing laid off on here just yet for this next line. So I'm going to work that out right now. So just use our dividers to uh, try and find that center point. Okay, there we go. Here, this is where my shear line should be. There's probably a way I can find that on the inside if I'm careful about it. 
When I was building the mold, I made a point of running one of those stringers right along the shear line so that I could pick it up at this point in the process. Yeah, it's hard for me to do it, but I can basically reach up underneath here and, and find that other shear line. And if I kind of just feel for it right here, the stick, bring it out to the front here, I do line up with it. So I'm right. I'm on the money. So let's get a little batten and see if we can't figure out a way to wrap this around here. So right now, this is just an experiment to see how, how one could lay off this line. I'm not even sure how to do it because I've never tried to do this kind of operation before. But we'll pop a clamp onto the batten back here. So this is just a piece of polyethylene. And I picked this stuff up from my local plastic supply shop. And they call it arena board. So I use this stuff a lot in the shop actually. I use it for um, backing bands for doing glue ups and steam bending and stuff. It's it's pretty economical. So we'll go like that. There, but then I gotta make this crazy bend up here. Actually that looks pretty good. It does not work too badly at all. So, how can I lay that out? Let's see. The problem of access to these spots. That's okay. More cam clamps, maybe? I chose this batten because it's like super flexible. I could twist it in any way I please. And hopefully it'll just stay put. Oops, I don't want to hang on there. Okay, I need to make a little modification. Got this block that we can now get rid of. as I sort of need it on there. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, that, that sort of works. This is one of those six Six hand jobs, I got one hand to, to do with. Come on. So it's looking like something like that. really hard to visualize. So you know what I'm going to do? I am going to figure out how I can fake that. Grease pencils can be your friend. Try this again. Come on. It's there. Okay. There we go. So I've just used a grease pencil to mark that out. Um, Grease pencils are nice because they'll stick to just about anything and they're easy to get off. So now what I'm going to do, pull this baton off because it's not helping me. And I'm going to pull off these guys because they're not really helping me anymore. I'm going to lay on this piece of tape here. Now I'm just going to run it right along my my um, grease pencil line. And I think the outside of that will basically describe that sheer line being just a little bit strong. And remember when I was when I'm taping out lines like this, I go 
very long on this end, and I just kind of use it like a flexible button. There we go. About a hundred percent sweet right in there. I can see a little flat spot. Actually, pull that off and try that again. That's better. And I don't know where my line's going to go to. I'm just going to pull off my tape here. And uh, let's see if we can find a good way of feeling that line. I think I know what to do. I just made a little tool. This is a little feeler gauge. So on the inside, this little hook is going to feel one of my battens that's on the inside of the mold. And I'm just going to be able to butt this right up to the top or the bottom of a batten. And the other edge is going to show me exactly where that is. So if I come over here, I know I've laid out my marks nicely to about this point. I just want to check them elsewhere. So that one. So one, two, right there. So what's nice about this is I could drag this along here if I wanted to. Or I can just use it in spots like I am using it. And most importantly is I'm clearing all the sort of unevenness down here, which is why I'm not using like a square or a marking gauge to find that line. So real convenient, real simple. So if I come to do like this, There's my mark right there. There we go. Now if I take my lining tape here and I just stretch that out a little bit better. There we go. I already see that that's not quite fair there. I don't like that. I'm going to restring that one. Looks good up to about there. Come on. That's better. So it's not perfect, but that's a pretty good facsimile of the shear line along that little area. Now I want to transfer this shape to the other side of the boat, and I've got a really interesting little technique for doing that. And I learned this many years ago when I worked for a First Nations carver. We were doing a totem pole and we needed to be able to transfer all the features that are on one side of the pole to the other because this particular style of carving was very symmetrical. And so to do that we used basically a really big set of dividers like this. Now the idea is we can transfer points from one side to the other very easily um, by just picking up two relative points. And if you use three relative points we can actually even determine whether or not this side is the same as this side in terms of the depth. If we were to pick up three points and they didn't touch on the other side, they created sort of, they're all spread apart, then we knew that that side was oversized. And if they're uh, crossed over each other and uh, that we'd know that that size, side was undersized, we'd have to shave down this side to compensate. So anyhow, very simply, I've got a little block I've put up here with a hole drilled in it just to act as a center point. And it's only because this is smooth I could use the, uh, the rudder hole, but it, it, my divider is barked into the uh, back side of this here. So we can pick any point along here, and I'll just use, go like right there, and I've got a grease pencil on here to mark a line. So I do that, and I come around to the other side, and we do the same thing. And I simply take, pick up another point, so I'll come down here now, find my first one, which is right there. I'm going to pick up through the top edge of my tape, scratch that, swing it around to the other side, and do the same thing. And that should give me the same point. Now, if I were to pick up a third point, say here or there, that would give me my third dimension. I'm not going to do that. There's not a lot of room here to, to do that kind of thing, but one could do that. 
So we'll try that again. I'm going to come further here. I'm going to pick up a point halfway between this station and the last one right there. Carry it across. Go. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now using my little finder tool, I'm going to pick up a couple more points. Right there. I'm just going to refine these a little bit. Now, these might not be 100% on the money, but they will act as a pretty reasonable guide to help me eyeball it. Like so. Now that's not the smoothest looking line. I probably need to play with a little bit more, but that's the general idea. Okay, so here's another method. And uh, I'm just laying a piece of tracing paper right along the center line here, right over our tape. And I'm just gonna trace this on here, just like so. And my pencil can actually follow the contour of that tape quite nicely. right to about there and from there on in I think I can eyeball it into the shear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and now I'm going to just trim this away with a knife. Okay, there we go. Now I'll just lay this back up along the center line. Tack it down and then we've got a line that we can follow to with our tape to just tape it down. go. Now that we have the slipper stern sorted out, all we need to do is finish marking out the shear. We'll give it a slightly oversized rough cut, pop it off the mold, and later on we'll refine that shear line when we build our deck structure. That's it for today folks. Hope you enjoyed that. Now please join us next time when we pop this thing off the mold. Now don't forget to subscribe and like and share. And if you can help us out on Patreon, I really appreciate that too. You can find links in the description or up in the corner. Ciao for now, folks.